Hello everyone and welcome back to Timberborn. This is episode 3 playing through hard mode. In the last episode we set up the bad water diverter system and we barely got this installed in time. The bad water is going the other direction and surprisingly none of the trees over here are actually dead. I kind of figured that some of them would be since they're so close to the bad water but it seems like they are all surviving and there's actually quite a few trees that have grown up. We did just start pumping water now that we're at the end of the bad tide and we're getting ready for the next wet season. We also started setting up this area for the water dump and that's going to allow us to expand our farm a little bit beyond just right here because we are running really low on food. We're almost completely out of kohlrabi. And the next day has started and you can see the water is pushing the bad water out. Pretty soon we can lower all the floodgates and let some water start flowing back into this area. We do need to start constructing this though, that way the water can go all the way through here and out in this area. And during this wet season we're going to try and get one of these medium water tanks set up. So first we have to go ahead and unlock it. And I think this would be a perfect spot to try and fit one. And so we're going to try and bump this up on the priority list to get this constructed as soon as we can. Although we don't really have any planks at all right now. And as you can see, the water is going completely out this way. It's stopped flowing for the most part out here. Looks like there's a little bit going through, but we do need to get this system set up so we can actually block the water from going out here. And if the beavers do manage to fill up all of these before we can construct this, we'll probably just construct a few temporary water storages right over here. And we already have a drought approaching again at the beginning of day three. And so this guy is sitting on his butt. He's not doing anything. We have plenty of wood, so we're gonna actually end up making those small water tanks. These will just help give us a little bit of a buffer and allow these water pumpers to store some water pretty quickly. We are right at the edge of constructing this medium water tank. We have only two cures left and they just made one. So I think that we should be able to get this constructed, but we might need another water pumper. By the time the next wet season appears, we're probably going to make a few more water pumpers since our population is going up a bit. So look at how much water we have, just under 600. We probably will need to pause this during the drought, at least for the first one, because we really should have a bit more water stored up than this. We're going to have the beavers pumping a little bit later into the night, a 20 hour workday. Just try and get this a little bit closer to 700. Oh man, we got some hungry and thirsty beavers. We'll go ahead and pause this right now. And we really should get another farmhouse set up. We have plenty of wood, so let's go ahead and do that right now. And we do have some unemployed beavers, which is not a bad thing. We can go ahead and throw them in the lumberjack flags for now. Oh, and you can see the beavers are already over here. So they're starting to work on both parts of this. So we do need to get them over this direction. And we have enough science to unlock the double platform. So we'll go ahead and move that across here. And then we can get the last two floodgates put in. Looks like the drought is about nine days long. We got the first day no problem. Although our water has already dropped a little bit more than I would like. If needed, we can start turning one of these water pumpers on, but I'm hoping that we won't come to that point. And just like that, we have a third farmhouse. It's going to be helpful for getting some of the extra kohlrabi and then also getting some more cassavas because this guy is not able to get enough cassavas in order to actually do the fermentation. So we can have these two actually focus on cassavas and we can also go ahead and get another farmhouse set up here and then we'll start with some kohlrabi. And so we're doing pretty good on planks and gears right now, but one of the next things we need to look at is scrap metal. There's one right here, and there is another one over in this area. I think we might try and get some of the scrap metal from here first. So we'll go ahead and cut through here, and then we'll just start making stairs all the way up this area. And I believe we should have enough to unlock the scavenger flag. So we'll have a couple of those placed up there. Oh, and you can see the bad water and the water mixed make a kind of purpley goo looking thing. Still irrigates the land a little bit, better than just having bad water sitting here. And it looks like once again this area dried out. It seems like it's drying out a lot faster than everything over here. And with the amount of planks and gears we have, we're going to go ahead and get rid of a few of these water storage tanks. And then place another large one in, that way we can fill it all the way up. We also need to keep making some more water pumpers but we don't want this guy working right now so we'll have three more set up plus this one so we're basically doubling how many we have the food situation is improving a little bit we have some more kohlrabi but it seems like we're just about out of cassavas and we are actually dropping in water a bit we only have 
Man, we're just above 100 and we still have three days left. We're gonna hold out on pumping water for just a little bit, but I do think we're gonna end up pumping some during the drought, which just shows that we really need to get these set up for the next wet season. Well, on the bright side, we did finish this, and if it is a drought instead of a bad tide during the next event, then we would be able to store a little bit of water right behind here. We could have this set to 1.5, this one set to 2, and then all the water would just pool here and then spill out over in this direction. But obviously it doesn't apply if it's a bad tide. Oh, we have a beaver who's pumping. Have to keep an eye on these guys when they're being constructed. So with that third farmhouse over here, it looks like this isn't quite enough food to keep them busy all the time. So we'll go ahead and try and expand the area for planting food just a little bit. And also having the food up here hopefully will help supplement it. Oh man, we are down to the second last day and we are running really low on water. And we are almost officially out of water. Okay, we are at zero. We'll need to turn on a couple of these guys just to get some for the next day. But this drought was only eight days long and you can see this is almost completely evaporated. So we are gonna need to think about ways to irrigate the land without relying on the water right in here. Oh, and the water over here dried up. They last about two days and three days. Okay, that's not too bad. We can go ahead and turn that on. We'll run out of water for just a little bit, but we can get all these turned on for tomorrow. And the drought has ended. We are beginning the next cycle and the water should be coming back right about now. And it couldn't come at a better time because you can see we just sucked all the water out of here. So now we're gonna get a little bit back. And we can also start filling this section up and it should start spilling over here. Ooh, it is about to overtop. That was pretty close. You can see there is a surge of water going through here. But we do have a huge capacity for water. We can store up to 1300. Now I'm just hoping that this is enough water pumps to fill up a good chunk of that. Oh, well, I'm looking at it and it looks like we actually are maxed out on wood storage. We'll go ahead and get another one set up. We want to make sure we always have places to store some extra wood. Now look at we do have these scrap metal collectors set up and they have been collecting some. We do need to get some storage set up for them. At the beginning of day three we're up to over 500 water. Much better than the last time. And they're really just starting to fill up one of these. They haven't even gotten to the second one. Which means we could probably stand to make a couple more water pumps. But we're getting to the point where it's kind of hard to fit them. We can put them over here, but then they have to walk quite a ways to put the water in the storage over here. And we are running a little bit low on beavers, at least right now. We have seven vacant jobs. We don't really need scrap metal collectors during the wet season. I am pleasantly surprised that we didn't have anything announced on day four, but tomorrow that could be a different story. Food's looking decent. We have some kohlrabi saved up and berries, but I'm really glad that we have the second farm set up now. And we will need to start looking at getting a second fermenter. Plus we'll need to get an oil press for the canola. Although with getting some of the stuff set up over here like the second fermenter and then also the oil press, they're gonna both take some power and we don't really have a whole lot of capacity with just this big power wheel. Really we're gonna need to get an engine set up and that takes metal blocks which means that we need to get a smelter set up but that also takes power. But at the very least we can get this started. They'll be able to start constructing it. We do have plenty of scrap metal. And then we have almost enough gears, not quite, and then some planks. And day five, we still don't have anything announced for a drought or a bad tide. We're getting up there in water, 880 out of 1300 stored. And it looks like we have a couple homeless beavers, so let's get another house set up for them. And there is a bad tide approaching three days, but we're in a pretty good spot in terms of water consumption. We have been saving up quite a bit, which is fantastic. We will not be able to use this storage area, unfortunately. Oh, and we're flooding everything through here. Oh, because I had it set to zero. That's a little bit too much water. Oh, look at we're up to 43 homeless beavers. I wonder why that is. We did manage to replace all the birch over here and the birch over in this area, but that means that we've had quite a few days without having these trees grow up. We're down to 83 wood in total. Some of these are only halfway to growing up. So I sense a little bit of a wood shortage coming up soon. And we are just about completely maxed out on water, so we'll go ahead and pause a few of these for now. Now something that we could look at doing is actually getting maybe some levees placed across here and then have this little area be a nice pumping station. It's gonna take a lot of wood and we don't have a whole lot right now. 
But if we start getting over here, but if we get over into this area with some paths, then we can harvest some of these trees and then maybe look at getting the footprint set up. And the bat tide is coming through. We just lowered this in the nick of time. And unfortunately, the water physics for the dams are kind of bad. So you can see we only have about half of the water here that we really need. It's already below here, so I'm guessing that some of this stuff might be drying out soon. We do have this area a little bit overly hydrated so we'll see how long the water here lasts but I think we need to start setting up some areas for having water dumps over here and now that the bad tide is going on you can see we actually have a few unemployed beavers we don't need to be having that go on so we'll start ramping up our production a little bit we can also start unpausing some of the scavenger flags and as soon as we can get this lumberjack flag constructed we can get a little bit of extra wood because we are down to zero right now Although we do have some logs that can be chopped down over here, which is good news. It looks like we just finished our smelter and we have plenty of scrap metal, so that's going to be fantastic. Getting some metal blocks going and we can also look at getting an engine set up now. So we can go ahead and place that, but we will need to get a hauling post set up. Otherwise, they cannot feed the fire right here. So we'll go ahead and get a hauling post set up right over here. I have a perfect slot for it. It'll be right next to the builder's hut. And since we don't actually have the ability to process soybeans and canola right now, we're going to have these two farms focus on cassavas and kohlrabi. Because the fermented soybean recipe, if you look in here, it actually requires soybeans and canola oil, but we cannot get the canola oil right now. And we could place an oil press down to start working on that, but the thing is that we don't have enough power to even power this whole system right now. You can see we're over 100 HP short, so getting this in and then another building, not really a good idea. So we'll go ahead and start working on getting this engine constructed, and then after that, we can start looking at getting the oil press set up. You know, we should also look at getting some of these trees cut down because they have a lot of wood stored up. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's episode. We survived another drought, and we are going through another bad tide right now. We have a lot of water pumping capacity set up. Plus, we also have these large storages, so they can store a lot of water. And our food situation is a lot better. We have over 300 kohlrabi stored up. We are able to process the cassavas, but just not quite as much as we need right now. But we do have a larger area for planting food, and we can definitely expand this farm over in this direction as needed. But we'll just need to be able to process soybeans and canola coming up which means getting this engine set up and then the other fermenter and then an oil press. So overall, we have quite a few things to work on, but we have a good plan of attack right now. So if you enjoyed today's episode, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and consider becoming a channel member. And with that, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.